But look at this horrible thing that developed. It's so ironic. We became enslaved by freedom. Because we don't know what our purpose is, for which freedom is very helpful, but we are free. But what do you do? Free to do what? Freedom of religion became freedom from religion. We are free to do anything. Well, the first question really is, what do we need to be redeemed from? What is wrong with how we are that we need to be redeemed? If you're talking about slavery, yeah, well, of course. People shouldn't be slaves. Even people who want to be slaves shouldn't be slaves. There's no mystery there. So wh why the need for redemption? Everybody, everybody needs to be redeemed. We're not all slaves. In fact, we haven't been slaves in a long time. We almost forgot how. What do we need to be redeemed from? That's a very important question. Because how do you know whether you are redeemed if you don't even know what you're being redeemed from? You could tell yourself you're redeemed and you're not. You can tell yourself you're not and you are. How would you know? And that's why saying we need to be redeemed is like starting in the middle of a story. Tell me the beginning. Start from the beginning. How did I get messed up that I need to be redeemed? And who messed me up? Very important question. Also, what do you consider messed up? Who agrees or who admits that he's messed up? A person who can't function? That doesn't take any brilliance. <laughs> you can't function, you got a problem. That's not everybody. You got yourself into trouble, now you got to get yourself out of trouble. Is that redemption? So what, what, what are we talking about? So to get right to the point, to cut through all the clutter, there are many issues, many dependencies, many addictions in which we are enslaved. In fact, the human spirit, and this, this, is, this is something we, we really need to think about and know about it, and we did talk about it during the Shabbat. The real enslavement is that the human spirit feels enslaved by being human. The humanness, the condition in which we are created, you're created a human being, and in some way that enslaves me. Because I don't want to be a human being. <laughs> so I don't want to be a mensch. I want to be something more. That's what we mean by purpose of life. Why am I here? Why are you here? Just be what you are. Stop crutching. If you're a man, be a man. If you're a woman, be a woman. You're Jewish, you're Jewish. You're alive, you're alive. What is this issue with why and what for? And what is the purpose? Why can't we just settle down and be content? The answer is very simple, because we are enslaved by the limitations of the human condition, and we don't like it. So before we get enslaved by money, by a job, by a career, in a relationship, a codependency, before we get enslaved to um, 
substances, to gambling, to sex, we're already enslaved. So that explains by the origins of enslavement. It's not one person enslaving another. That's the lowest level. It deteriorates to that. Because I feel enslaved, I can therefore be enslaved by another person. But if I never felt enslaved in myself, nobody else could enslave me. Or in different words, if I wasn't addicted to myself, I would never be addicted to anything outside myself. So this is what the Torah is trying to tell us. God created us human so that we can become something more. We are not a finished product. That's the meaning of in six days, God created everything to do, to do something with it. Everything that was created needs to become something more. So God created a perfect potential. It's our job to live up to that potential, to bring out that potential. And when we don't, we feel enslaved. And we don't know what to blame it on. So we blame it on society, on the, on, on the government, on the neighborhood, on the boss, on the teacher, and on the parent. Everyone is enslaving me. Get to the root of the problem. You feel enslaved from the minute you're born. And there's only one way to fix that. And that's by yourself. So the ideal, perfect, utopian situation would be when we are no longer enslaved by our humanness. How will that happen? What will we become that is more than human? Partners with God and creation. Until then, we are enslaved and we need to be redeemed. Rabbi Friedman, but how do we do this? We're still here. We're bound by certain laws, standards that are here, that in order for us just to feed our family, we have to abide by those standards that have been set, <laughs> not by, by somebody in this society. Um, and how can we get away from it? How can we stop it? How can we not care about making money? Um, all the things that we have n named that, 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 are, that confined us. We thought we could be um, free if we have enough money. We are freer this way. But uh, it has the opposite effect freedom of speech, freedom of religion, freedom of all these things that actually enslaved us even more than redeemed us. So how do we get away from all these societal standards and be able to be God's partners? So this is how it worked. First, God took us out of Egypt. Then he gave us the Torah. There's a reason for that. Why does slavery come before, before the Torah? Taking us out of Egypt meant making us free. When you're free, then you can do whatever you need to do and whatever it takes to accomplish your goal. But when you're in, enslaved by the goal of oh, hell, you're not going to accomplish it. You won't affect the world. The world will affect you. You're not going to make money. The money is going to make you. 
miserable <laughs> or whatever, arrogant. So the first thing is we need to be free. It's a little bit, I'm not sure it's a perfect example, but a carpenter, an expert carpenter, he takes a look at a pile of wood and he sees it very differently than the non-carpenter. The non-carpenter looks at a pile of, of lumber and there's no way this is ever going to become a piece of furniture. There's no way. It's a hard, unbending, unyielding piece of wood. How will this ever become beautiful? The artist doesn't see that at all. He's not intimidated. A sculptor is not intimidated by a slab of, of marble. He sees the statue. He's free because he's not intimidated. He's free because he knows he's the artist. He's the master, not the slab, not the, the, the two by four. The same is true with any art. You see an empty canvas with a bunch of paint. How is this ever going to become a painting? How will this come alive? How will this be beautiful? The artist is not intimidated. In other words, the material doesn't scare the artist or the master. Or the... the first thing we need to know is we, we, are, we are the artist. We're not at war with the materials, with the substances. We're the masters of the substances. If you come to it with that attitude, like a, a confident teacher, the confident teacher never says, how in the world am I going to teach these kids? They don't want to learn. What do you mean they don't want to? Give them to me. I'll, 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 I'll get them interested. I'll, what's the problem? If you feel like a teacher. If it's just a difficult task, yes, you're intimidated. So what does the Torah tell us? First, be free. You don't have to be enslaved. You don't have to be uh, intimidated by nature and by limitations and by, here's a world that you can make into whatever you want. Once you have that attitude, oh, now you can do everything. To a lesser degree, of course, coming from Europe to America, from a Jewish perspective, Judaism in Europe was incredible, very impressive, awesome. But it was destroyed. Where to go from there? The Rebbe, coming from Ukraine, Russia, had to choose. What's going to be the new home for godliness, for Torah, for Judaism, for Jews? There's a big world. You can go anywhere. The Rebbe chooses America. And for those who know, the reputation that America had back then was that it's the last place you want to go. It's completely godless. There's never going to be any Judaism, Yiddishkeit in America. <laughs> no way. The Rebbe chooses America. Not because he likes a good challenge. We're talking about the previous Rebbe is because we had to get ready for Mashiach. In order to be ready for Mashiach, you first have to be free from everything else. How can you move on to a greater, mo much more impressive level of godliness when you're not free? 
When you feel oppressed, when you feel limited, intimidated, crippled. And that's what we felt. So they never said, you know what, let's go to America. Americans don't feel limited. Americans don't feel crippled. Americans don't feel, well, you know, in, in the good days. <laughs> the America that used to be. Not only don't Americans feel limited by the borders of the country, Americans think the whole world is theirs. Because the American dollar can buy anything anyway. So Americans are cosmopolitan. We go anywhere in the world proudly telling the world that we are Americans. And the Rebbe felt, you know, Jews need to, need to get a little of that spirit. We need to feel free. So when freedom seemed to be a contradiction to religiosity, the Rebbe felt, no, freedom is a necessary introduction. It's like, let's get out of Mitzrayim again and now approach Torah with a whole different, higher, deeper commitment and insight. Hasidic Judaism, Chabad Judaism, much deeper, much higher, much greater, much more universal. So where can you do that? In a place of freedom. Freedom is not scary. No, people can do whatever they want. Good. An artist can do whatever he wants with that canvas. He can do whatever he wants with that piece of marble. And the carpenter can build anything he wants with that wood. But the freedom is a bad thing? We never stop thanking God for taking us out of Egypt every day of the year, three times a day, for taking us out of Egypt. We can't get over it. Which means we're free. And freedom is a bad thing? No. So we're going to celebrate Pesach again. You know, somebody asked uh, Sharansky, do you believe in the Exodus? A non-Jewish company was filming, and they interviewed him, and they asked him, do you believe in the Exodus? He says, I am the Exodus. <laughs> <laughs> I was in enslaved and I came out. So yeah, leaving Europe is like coming out of Mitzrayim. So, Rabbi Friedman, exactly. This, this freedoms, it, it's, it's for sure. Freedom kind of, is, as far as what you just said, equals fearlessness. <laughs> So kind of no fear, complete trust, complete um, confidence. That is something that helps us get out of our limitations as far as, I mean, to put it in the simple language, I guess. But look at this horrible thing that developed. It's so ironic. We became enslaved by freedom. Because we don't know what our purpose is, for which freedom is very helpful to help us attain our, our purpose, we don't know what our purpose is, but we are free. But what do you do? Free to do what? Freedom of religion became freedom from religion. We are free to do anything. It is so bad. Look at what has happened. You say to a person, you're a woman, and they're offended. I'm non-binary. Don't tell me I'm a woman. I am free, so I don't have to be a woman. 
I'm free. I don't have to be a man. I'm free. I don't have to be anything. So I'm crazy. <laughs> Literally crazy. <laughs> so when freedom itself becomes a dictator, no, no, you can't be a woman. That's not freedom. You can't be a Jew. That's not freedom. You can't even be a human being. That's not freedom. So your dog and you, no difference. Don't limit me to being a dog. Don't limit me to being a human. Okay, what do you want to be? I don't know. Somebody help me. So freedom itself became a dictator. It's intimidating. You can't be anything because you have to be free. It's killing us. It's literally killing us. So freedom has to be followed. You come out of Egypt, you go to Har Sinai. You can't just sit there being nothing. So from Mitzrayim, you go straight to Har Sinai. And you receive the Torah. You receive your marching orders. You are now free to do this. 613 mitzvahs. Otherwise, you might get enslaved by freedom. That's probably what we mean when we say in the Haggadah on Pesach, if God hadn't taken us, our ancestors, out of Egypt, we and our children and our children's children would be enslaved. That's a pretty big statement. This is 3,000 years later. We would still be enslaved? Maybe this is the meaning. God took us out of Egypt to take us to Har Sinai. If we had come out of Egypt any other way, if we had just gained freedom, we would now be enslaved to the freedom. The miracle of our coming out of Egypt is that we came out with a purpose, with a plan, with an objective. So freedom did not enslave us. Freedom was our tool, not our God. But this is literally the best description of what's going on in America. You can't define yourself, you can't identify yourself, you can't pick a goal and stick to it because you have to be free. Rabbi Friedman, is this happening only in America or around the world? Around the world. People are so enslaved by freedom, they're becoming jealous of those countries where there is no freedom. Hmm. It's, it's so twisted. Yet, no one is still at a point where they can make a clear decision that this is not what I want. This kind of freedom to be anything, anytime, anywhere, anyhow, is not what I want. People are still kind of going towards that. Why? Simply because they don't have an alternative. No one ever told them what they should be what they're designed to be, destined to be. So they keep looking. They don't know where to look. So every Mishigas that comes along, you can't be straight, you gotta be gay. No, you can't be gay, you gotta be... What should I be? Well, whatever you are, don't be it. Because you have to be free. It's crazy. It literally drives people to suicide. If you enjoyed this conversation or this topic, and you're looking for more information, 
or you want to hear it again from another angle, there is a way to do that. And that is in this book. It's all there. Order it from Amazon. You can read it, reread it, and share it. We have a Sunday night program for VIPs that you might be interested in. It's informal. It's questions and answers. It's conversation. It's really relaxed. It's really pleasant, enjoyable, informative, and uh, kind of community-like. It's a Sunday night program. There's a um, Wednesday morning program for the VIPs, and there's a Wednesday night program. All of it, just conversation, casual, laid back, unscripted. So join us, take a look, click uh, the link below and see which, which of the three suits you best and join us for some enjoyable conversation.